Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this video tutorial, we're going to be talking about a common chassis sim misconception slash misunderstanding, which is basically the way that chassis sim goes about representing its arrow maps. Now, the thing that makes this a little bit tricky isn't the fact that it's hard, it's just a little bit different. But I assure you, once you get your head around the way that chassis sim represents arrow maps, you'll never look backwards because it's a very, very powerful way of economizing the arrow maps that you need. And it also gives you a very, very quick fire way of being able to uh, make uh, wing, cha uh, wing changes once you, got your, uh, once you have your head around the way that um, the arrow representation works. So. Without further ado, what I'm going to do is let me go through and present a little bit of background theory about how this all works and about the way that this all slots in together. What we're going to discuss is I wanted to talk to you about some uh, the background of how chassis sim goes about representing arrow maps. Now, what we're going to discuss is it goes without saying the aero map is an important part of the vehicle model indeed for CLAs once you start pushing beyond about 1.7 to 2 the aero pretty much will dictate what you do with um, the setup then we're going to discuss base, uh, uh, the idea behind the way that Chasing represents the aero map and I'm going to illustrate this with an, exa uh, with an example now the air, uh, at its core, uh, a race car aero map is effectively a plot of front and rear ride height of downforce or CLA, drag, CDA, and aero balance. Now, as we discussed before, it has a massive impact on vehicle performance. And as you can see, I've gone through here and uh, I've gone through here, and you can see to uh, your left hand side, there's the downforce map, there's the drag map. And lastly, there is the arrow. Uh, uh, there is um, the arrow balance map that's expressed as a percentage of uh, front downforce. Now, if we were going to be really, really specific about this, we would have three of these maps per every wing setting that you had. Now, that would be the absolute, uh, absolute one hundred percent correct way of doing it. There's just one small problem. If you're not careful, you're going to wind up with a hard drive full of aero maps. That being said, to quote the Joker from uh, The Dark Knight, I'm about to show you a magic trick. A really elegant way of doing this is to take our baseline aero configuration um, for both downforce and drag and divide it by the maximum value of the map. So let's illustrate this with the downforce map from our F3 car that we saw previously. Going through here, we've got the downforce map to the left-hand side that's expressed in terms of CLA. Now, the maximum value of downforce here is 2.875. And so what we do here is we divide this, uh, is we divide this arrow map by 2.875. And you'll see to our right-hand side, we've got this arrow map in normalized form. So you can see where we had our value of 2.875, we now have 1. And every value in that map has been scaled to the value of 2.875. And you repeat the app and you repeat the same process uh, and you repeat the same process for drag. So the question has to be asked, how do we make a wing change? Let's presume for our example here that our uh, maximum CLA for our baseline was 2.875 and the maximum CDA for our baseline was 0.9. So if we increase the downforce by 2, if we make a wing change and that increases the downforce by 2% and the drag by 3%, the new maximum CLA and CDA is going to be given by our CLA reference, which is 2.875, multiplied by 1.02, which is now 2.9325, but we can approximate that to 2.93. And our uh, new uh, C uh, and our new uh, CDA uh, uh, and our new CDA maximum is now going to be the point uh, uh, is now going to be 0.92 uh, is now going to be 0.927. So, how do we go about applying this to our new? Uh, how do we go about applying this to our normalized map? All we have to do is multiply 
our normalized map for the C, uh, uh, all we ha have to do is multiply our CLA, uh, uh, our normalized CLA map by 2.93, which we have done in uh, uh, in our um, top row of um, uh, ta uh, our top row of tables there. So um, you can see here, I've just taken that normalized map we had for um, downforce and multiplied it by 2.93, and you can see every value there becomes 2.93. And repeating the same process for drag, we take our normalized map, and just to make the example simple, I've just kept with um, the normalized drag map, but in reality you do the, the normalized downforce map, but in reality you'd be doing this with the normalized drag map. And what I did in this particular example was I simply multiply it by our reference um, uh, our reference CDA of 0.9. But if I wanted um, uh, to get the drag map of the new value, I would have multiplied it by 0.927. And you can see that in um, the bottom uh, row of tables where the right uh, where the left hand side was our normalized map and the right hand side is uh, what uh, the uh, is what um, the adjusted uh, is what our adjusted values look like now we've multiplied it by our new maximum CLA and our new maximum CDA but the question has to be asked what about the arrow balance? Let's presume for our wing change in this particular example, we move the arrow, arrow balance backwards by 2%. All we do is we reduce every arrow balance table in the map by 2%. That's all we do. In more general terms though, what you do is that you take the average of um, the new arrow configuration and the average of the reference configuration and delta AWF, what, uh, how you offset um, uh, the arrow map, is simply going to be the arrow balance of the current map minus the arrow balance of the reference map. Now, in reality, you can actually get away with the, uh, uh, you can actually get away with effectively what the arrow balance is at the re at uh, the reference condition. It doesn't ch for small changes. It doesn't change all that much. Pluses and minuses of uh, 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 pluses and minuses of this approach. This works really well for small wing changes when the arrow map doesn't change much. So, for example, if you've got a high downforce map and you're just doing very very small changes in front and rear uh, uh, front and rear wing, this is a brilliant little way of uh, ch uh, of changing wings. However, this is going to run out of steams once you start doing large changes in the aero configuration that will fundamentally affect the aero sensitivity. That's when this approach runs out of steam. That being said, we have found in the chassis sim community that this greatly economizes the aero information that you need. And let me give you an extreme example. I had a um, customer who did a uh, aero test and did a uh, right height sensitivity sweep using a uh, low uh, using a low downforce uh, map configuration. Now, we were very much struggling in the dark with this car, and we needed uh, to, uh, and we were absolutely desperate for information. And I um, had another customer who had a similar car and asked me to do some wing changes. So to test out just how good the arrow changes were, um, I asked the other customer who had done the, um, the who had done the arrow sweep if I could use their map just to get an idea of what was going on. Well, anyway. That arrow map was so effective, we actually found that we actually extended it out for the high downforce configuration. It wasn't totally brilliant, but it was more than enough to find out some very, very powerful things about where to go to, and particularly in terms of uh, mainspring changes. So the, uh, the trick here is, let me reiterate again, what we do is that we basically take our downforce and drag map, we divide, uh, we take our downforce and drag map, and we divide it by the maximum value of that, uh, the maximum value of that map. So, in this particular example, we've got uh, the maximum CLA in this particular arrow map was 2.8 uh, uh, was 2.87. For our dra uh, for our drag map for our reference condition, it was approximately 0.9. And what we do is we divide that by every t uh, uh, by we do we take that 2.875 divided by every value in the downforce map. In the drag map, we take every value of that right height sensitivity map and we multiply it by 0.9. Now, 
if we've got a uh, if we've got to make a wing change and let's just say the downforce has increased by two percent and uh, the dra the drag has um, increased by three percent what we do is we simply multiply um, 1.02 multiplied by whatever our maximum CLA was for our reference condition, which was 1.02 times 2.875. And for our CDA, we take 0.9, multiply that by 1.03, and that leads to our new value of 0.927. And in terms of offsetting the arrow balance, all that we do is that we basically take what um, the reference condition offset was, which was 2%, which was a reduction of 2%, and we subtract every value in our arrow balance right height map by 2%. That's it. That's all we need to do. Now, in terms of the mechanics of driving this in chassis sim, what you'll find is when you click on the front wing, this is where you import your ride height sensitivity. This is where you input uh, your um, uh, ride height um, uh, sen uh, uh, sensitivity map. So this is our map for drag, uh, sorry, for downforce for drag and for uh, uh, and for arrow balance. And when we need to start um, inputting um, changes, we click on the rear wing and this controls the and this controls the scale of those maps. So we can see here we've got a CLA max of 2.819 or about 2.82. So the maximum value of the map that will be applied in chassis sim will be 2.82 for CDA max. What that means is the maximum CDA that will be applied to, um, that chassis sim will see um, in that arrow map will be 0.855, and the arrow balance there is uh, the arrow balance offset there is 0.01. So that means that chassis sim will be applying a one percent increase of all those arrow balance values. So, uh, so really, that's the key to adjust. That is what's going underneath the hood. Um, with um, uh, regards um, to uh, chassis sim. Now, for those of you who um, don't want to calculate this from first principles, we do have a very, very um, uh, useful tool called the Downforce Dragon Wing Change Forces Editor. The key to getting this right is what you do is that you take your baseline arrow map and what you need to do is for a particular front and rear ride height, and for this one we've just specified 10 mil front and 10 mil rear, is that you go through, you read off your um, your downforce at this particular point, which for this particular example was approximately 832 kilos, and for your drag was 361 kilos. You put in your arrow balance at that particular point, which is 36.4%. You put in your reference speed in kilometers per hour, and you put in your reference density in kilograms per meter cubed. So you've got two options here. If you decide to make, uh, if you want to simply read off um, the downforce and uh, 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 the downforce and drag as absolute numbers, you just simply click the, uh, you just simply change them in here, uh, uh, change them in here, and in here. Or alternatively, if you have them in terms of delta front downforce and delta rear force and delta drag force, you simply plug the numbers in here, press OK, and what that will do is these will adjust the appropriate values that are required to make this work. So as you can see, doing your arrow adjustments in chassis sim is not hard. It's just different to what you're used to. And I guarantee you, once you get used to actually draw, uh, once you get used to thinking about error configurations in this uh, uh, error configurations in this particular uh, uh, in, in this particular way, I guarantee you it is going to make your life so much easier because you can either use the down downforce drag and wing calculators, or if you know what your baseline configurations is, all you've got to do is have multiples of this, multiples of your downforce multiples of your drag and multiples of um, your arrow balance offset. And for those of you who still use Imperial units, 
I should add for your Downforce Dragon Wing Changes, uh, for your Downforce Dragon Wing Changes Forces Editor, you can input those forces in pounds, force per inch. But for those of you who um, do read my race car engineering articles, don't think for one millisecond I am going soft on you. It is This and uh, entering tyre pressures as uh, PSI is the only concession I do make to the Imperial uh, measurement system. I have said it on many times before and I will say it again. Any measurement system that has the slug as its measure of density, as far as I am concerned, is intellectually flawed and should be treated as such. Now, that being said, though, on a more serious note, you can see here that entering uh, that uh, this non-dimensionalized uh, uh, this non-dimensionalization method is a very very powerful way of condensing the error maps that uh, of uh, condensing the error maps that you need so let's review the front wing controls your uh, uh, controls your pitch sensitivity or it's where you input your ride height sensitivity map so that's for downforce drag and error balance. The rear wing controls the maximum value of those maps for downforce and for drag and the error balance offset is entered as percentage divided by 100. If you can get your head around that, I guarantee you it is going to it, it will greatly simplify your way of entering wing changes in chassis sim, and you'll be doing wing changes in, uh, and you'll be doing wing changes in your sleep. So I commend this to you and take your models, give it a go, and see where you are and see where uh, and see where you wind up.